Okay, so I've got my Spectrum, and there's one particular mod I'd like to make to it to try and help preserve it. Now, I know that the screw down here is, uh, its mount is busted. Actually, I'd kind of like to know what I can do about that. I don't know what type of plastic this is, but I want to glue this back on. But I'd rather not have a big, ugly blob of epoxy or something. So I thought I'd try Solvent Weld. I don't know what type of plastic this is, but um, acetone is a pretty good first guess. Yeah, if you see the uh, plastic is coming straight off on there. Hopefully that will be a nice strong weld by the time I'm done with the rest of the work. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to do is look at the power regulator. Now, I always hear about people saying to recap retro machines, but um, low voltage caps like these um, aren't as bad as higher voltage caps in power supplies. And these regulators are very inefficient in the spectrum, and they generate an awful lot of heat. And if not a problem for the regulator itself, it can be a little bit of a problem for the rest of the board. So I've been told about a mod which um, is going to help out with that. Now something I'd like to do is put a multimeter between the power supply and the spectrum just to see what it's drawing. So I've got this cable. Uh, let's see if I can open it up. This is just an old cable I had lying around which I think will do the job. Oh nice, yeah. It's just got two conductors inside it. So what I'm trying to do is leave one conductor in place, or intact, and I'll break the other one to put the current meter on. Okay, so it's minus 6.2 amps apparently. 0.62. So you might wonder why I'm talking about current consumption and heat in the same sentence. And that's because they're directly correlated in an electronic circuit like this. Power goes in and it gets turned into heat. Now we're either using that power to do useful work, such as running the processor and the memory and all the other components of the computer, or it's just dissipating into this heat sink and uh, warming up this circuit board. So if we put a better regulator on here and we see a big drop in the current consumption, we'd expect that we're going to see a big drop in the heat generation inside here as well. I'm just going to put some good solder in here just because you've got no idea what the old stuff's like. And this sometimes actually helps with desoldering components. Okay, so that says GL7805. And I'm going to replace it with this, which is a TSR1-2450. From the pinout that uh, Future Me's probably put up on your video screen, we can see that the pinout actually is a direct match and the separation of the pins looks the same as well. So we should be able to just drop this straight in. I'm going to see if I can clean up this PCB a little bit in the area underneath. Now I'm going to get a little bit of flux on here and see if I can put out some of this solder with the wick. Okay, I don't think I've got that on the microscope. I think that may have been my most successful endeavour with desoldered braid ever. Look at that, it's just hoovered it up. I suspect the flux is what made all the difference there. Alright, so this regulator faced that way. 
So this faces that way. Okay, so in theory, the spectrum should now work, but without the circuit being half covered by this giant heat sink, and it should draw a lot less current. Okay, so we've got 0.3738 amps. Oh, that's good. It's very nearly half. Let's pause for a second to look at the maths for that. Now, we've got a roughly 12 volt power supply coming in. We measured 0 0.62 amps before we made the mod and then after we made the mod we measured 0.38 now that's a difference of 0.24 now we convert from amps to watts by multiplying by the voltage 7.44 4.56 and then our difference is 2.88 watts so nearly three watts difference in consumption with the new voltage regulator. That's probably not gonna change my electricity bill very much, but um, in terms of the amount of heat we're wasting inside the case, that's probably quite significant. Could probably uh, boil a kettle over an extended programming session. I'm happy with that. Let's get it partially reassembled so we can give it a better test. Confirm it's all still working. So I am gonna clean these contacts a little bit. That might help us in the near future. Now just from its size, I assume that's the ROM chip. Spectrum has a 16K ROM. It would be nice if that was socketed, but there is a way to disable that, which we'll talk about in a future video. Okay, so that's powering up fine. Okay, now there is probably going to be lots of people saying I should recap it as well. Now, I felt that this was a much better first mod to do, because the heat really is the enemy of older systems like this, but a recapping probably is worth considering. Okay, so there's a few different values there. I will attempt to track down appropriately sized capacitors to fit that. Although if anyone knows of a convenient recap kit, then uh, throw me a link in the comments. Need to find some rubber feet that will fit these gaps. Now we know from last time we took it apart that the keyboard can be a little bit finicky with the plug-in. So let's power it up and give it a test. All looks good. Now, this one is the one that we solvent welded. Okay, I think that's come loose inside, so we'll have to try some different glue. Really pleased we got that mod working. The Spectrum always used to get very warm when I'd work on it for an extended period of time and uh, I'm pretty sure heat is what eventually killed the, the one I had as a kid. When you first get a Spectrum you take for granted the way these background images appear gradually. They start off as black and white and fill in with the colour. But once you get a bit more into it, you realise that this is actually the layout of the screen memory with the monochrome image and then the attribute data that brings the colour in. And of course, the annoying thing about that is all of that time we spent loading the image in was just loading the image and not loading the game. I used to play this game lots. 
Okay, so that's the any of those buttons to activate the jet. Okay, the pattern on this game has come back to me a lot quicker than Manic Miner. I think with the last fuel canister I need to drop onto the spaceship. There we go. Completed the level first time once I got the keys. Okay, so I mean, each time I work on this thing, I'll, I'll probably try and dig out a different game to show. But uh, I'm happy with that mod. That's uh, hopefully extended the life of this. I've also got the information I need to uh, try and order some capacitors to do a recap on it. Before I go, I'd like to give a very special thanks to the first patrons on my very new Patreon account. Your support is very much appreciated. I'm really quite touched that anyone would support me directly like this. Another thing I'll show is I got a ZX Interface 2. Now this is interesting because it's got the edge connector for the expansion port, but it's got a ROM connector here for a game cartridge. And I'm kind of interested in the outputs here as well. So I've designed a breakout both for the edge connector and for the ROM. So we can have a probe around on those at some point and uh, see if we can get an understanding of the signals. Hope you found it interesting. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.